Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jason Park here. I'm with Hypertooth Productions and I kind of wanted to walk you guys through how we are getting our shots, you know, how the lighting setups are, what camera we're using and, and things like that, right? So just a little bit of background. I do this all the time, but it's just to give, you know, new viewers context. Um, I've shot four feature films. They've been on two me, Amazon Prime, the one that's released uh, uh, this month, Pizza Boy Rick, it's on The CW. Um, we have our fourth film, Always Smile, which is being submitted to festivals like Sundance and the Atlanta Film Festival and a few others. And then currently, we're working on our fifth film, Rhino King. And right now, we're in the middle of production on that. So what I kind of want to do is show you uh, some stills from the film and explain to you guys how we're getting these shots. So let's go right into it. So we're gonna grab the first still, make this a little bigger. All right, so this is our first still. We have James, the lead character coming in, and we have um, his wife, Sarah. She's waiting for him, he's in trouble, all that good stuff. And as you see here, it has this white cast over here on the left, and then it has like this nice green tint over here on the right. Her skin is nice and brown and it's, it's well lit. So you, you might be asking yourself, right? Everyone has their own technique. Why are the colors so vibrant? A little bit about me and my style. I, I like raw vibrancy. I try to push the colors as much as I can in every project uh, right before they start breaking and looking muddled. So over here in this photo, we have lights on the left side. So on the left side, we're pushing a very bright light and it's hitting, uh, she's sitting this way, so it's hitting the right side of her face and you're getting the shadow on the other side. Uh, our right, her left. Essentially, what a lot of people do in Hollywood is when they shoot, they shoot on the dark side. So they shoot on the opposite side of the light. Uh, for me, I tend to break that rule all the time. I really don't care. Um, I go with what kind of looks good to me. And this shot exemplifies exactly what I wanted in this scene. So you have her waiting for James and there's no negative fill on the right side. There's no bounce. It's one light source on the left side that's kind of illuminating the entire room and, and giving this look. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on. And I'm just kind of going down the list, right? Uh, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so this shot right here, this movie is about male stripping, but, um, but it's more story driven. But this shot right here, you know, they're in the club, you got your bottom light source right there that gives the, the anamorphic streaks. You have a, 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 a light source on top so you have the top lighting of the actual restaurant bar and then you have a back um, light source over here in this corner because essentially what you do when you're shooting something at nighttime or you're shooting something dark to eliminate a lot of that noise and to get something that's clean and, and desired especially you know when you're shooting with the black magic 6k it's not a low light beast so essentially what you have to do is you have to over light the darkness and then you bring that darkness down in post. The reason why you can see the lighting here on the bottom is because it's a bar, it's a club. They're gonna have lights. So the light there is purposely there to give this experience and this flair to the scene, right? So in this shot right here, you have um, Zane, and you have Vince. There, there's a scene going on. You have this back that's really well lit. And you have a light source that's on the left of Vince. That's hitting him here. And then you got a little, a little bounce here on the right side. And what that does is it kind of fills the shadows while still giving you that nice light. If you look on um, Vince's hair, there's like an outline of light, right? That kind of just that separates him just a little from the background. So now, um, we'll go to this scene. Okay, so here's a perfect example that exemplifies uh, my style of boosting colors, right? This orange is very bright, the skin, 
she's over here within the door frame. You have James here, still got your shadows. So what's happening here is there's a light source above um, and then there's a light source which you can't see that's on the side of the camera. And that's what's pushing all of that light towards James, Sarah, and um, Jeff. Um, very simple shot, very simply lit. And you have, your, it's very contrasty, right? You have your bright reds, your dark reds, you have your black, your brown, your orange, you got your little shavings. And then you have her over here that's, that's lit well enough so you can see her in the scene, but it's still covered in shadows. Um, where are we at now? Mm. Okay, yes. So then here in this scene, you have Vince, right? He's taking a phone call. And you can see here in the background, all the details are saved and preserved, right? All the details of the white are nice. You see what's going on. And then you see his skin tone. He has that nice surfer brown. Is it, is it, is it creamy like modern cameras? No, this is more of a film emulation just because I love the 90s aesthetic of film. And with every project, I really try to capture that. And I really try to imitate that. So the way the colors are very bright and then... Uh, the skin's kind of washed, but still vibrant, is absolutely the look that I love. Um, so then we'll go here. Right here, this is a very, I'm not going to say complex scene, but I'm going to tell you guys exactly how to get this look, because this is a very cinematic look, right? You have the light coming from the right side, and it's being shot on the back left side, so it's shooting on the shadow side. So essentially here, if you see uh, up here on the upper left, there's bar lights, right? So right above them where we shot, we specifically sat them under the bar light. A lot of times the best thing that you can do as a filmmaker, especially as an indie filmmaker, but at any level, is utilize what you have within that space. So even if you look at the back in the bar, it's, it has this nice go to it. That was naturally lit from the bar. Above them, there's a highlight. And then in the corner, right, all the way in the right corner, there's another light that's feeling more light to kind of bounce this side of the face. So as you can see here, the silver is nice and silver, but it's not losing any detail. You have all this beautiful um, golden redness on his face. And then even if you look in the shoulder here, there's just a little bit of light before you see the detail in the shadows without it being completely black. So this is a beautiful scene. Um, here we have another scene of James, right? So you can see the nice goldness here. You can see the push of the colors. There's a, a light source here on the right side that's pushing on it. And as you can see, I'm shooting on the side of the light, not on the opposite side. This is uh, exactly you know, what you kind of go for when you're shooting something that's like a rom-com with drama. If you're shooting something that's a little more dark and, and very dramatic, right? And you're really trying to get that Sicario look or something, then essentially, instead of shooting on the right side, you're gonna shoot on the left side and you're gonna bring the ISO down. You're gonna make everything very dark. For me personally, I don't like films that are very dark where it's like, I have to really focus to see what's going on. I wanna see what's going on, right? And if you're a filmmaker, you're an actor or a director or anything like that, you're gonna have your own distinct styles and things that you like. A lot of creatives like very dark and very moody because we associate that with more cinematic, right? More cinema. Whereas comedies that are very bright essentially are not cinema to us. It's like, oh, that's popcorn movies. That, we can throw that away. But for me, what I, my goal with this film is to combine both of them, right? So you have the, the cinema dramatic shadows, but then you have the bright color of comedy. Uh, so we'll go here. So in this shot, very pretty shot, very vibrant colors, very washed. You have the natural lighting with a little bounce on this right side, but majority of this is natural lighting. Um, the greens are very dark, very, very dark, like rich collard greens. And then you have the shadows here in the hair. You have the light source here on the right side, and it just gives a nice separation from the back with these, um, with this lighting source that kind of hits the back of her head. Very, very beautiful uh, shot. Um, this shot right here kind of goes back to the house, right? We did a lot of scenes here. 
But as you can see, this was shot middle and a little bit to the left of the of the, the shadows. So you get more of the dramatic feel, but you still get that bright comedic color that I that I like, right? So the lighting source is here on the right side. It's pushing, it's pushing James's face. And then we're shooting here on the left side while blocking out this window. And you can still see the detail here while you got that sparkle in his eye. And then you got all of this here. So essentially within this scene, right, if I were to make up some jibber jabbish that, you know, a lot of us creatives tend to do within this film space, I would sit here and tell you, oh, yes, in this scene, it's du the duality of him wanting to stay in his marriage, but leave his marriage. And no, it's none of that. We have a light here. We're shooting on this side. Why? Because it looks good for the scene. And this scene is just a little more serious, but it's still a rom-com. Um, this scene in the movie is just me doing some stuff. You can see the dark reds here, the white reds here, light reds here. You have a light source that's kind of right above on the upper left. It's kind of hidden here, but you get both. You get the brightness and you get the shadows. You don't got to stay on that too long. Um, all right, last thing I'll share. So this right here is a scene where they're doing yoga. You may be asking like, hey, why is there a, you know, well, hey, we can see the light. This is purposeful. In this room, this is the character's like, you know, YouTube room, studio room, podcast room. You can see all the lights all the time in this room. But this room was designed to do that. Um, you see this nice bright orange. There's a lighting source here on the left. You also have that ring light that's providing light for everyone. And then you can't see it right now, but there's a light source on the right that's reflecting on the butterflies on her arm, right? So you have that very, very rich red here on my character's shirt. Then you have the nice skin tone here all the way around, red carpet. And then here uh, you're, on the left side, you're getting the shadows in front of the bright light in the back. So this gives you a very three-dimensional, especially with the ring light on the back, kind of separating her hair from the background. This gives you a very three-dimensional, rich color uh, film experience. Now, I kind of just want to talk to you guys. I'll bring up this BTS shot just so you guys see that, you know, I'm not lying about, you know, what we're shooting on or anything like that. Let me just make this a big screen. So this essentially is the setup that I use for this film, right? Black Magic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. That's the bread and butter. We use a, a Shiyu Crane 3S gimbal. I use a battery pack. This, this, this battery brick, I don't use V mounts that are overpriced and all that stuff. This battery pack powers my camera. And then maybe I'll do a separate video just on that. But this powers my camera for like eight hours. No, a no problem, right? Um, and then I use my wireless. The, this is both. I'm using the wireless Rode Pro 2. And then I use the Comica VM30. So I'm using both of those um, when I'm shooting these films. This is my little Lowe's uh, Home Depot setup that I use to help alleviate some of the pressure from this um, uh, gimbal. And then when we're color grading, I color grade everything from scratch. I can actually bring that up for you guys just to kind of give you an example really quick before I turn this off because this video is already at 13 minutes and, you know, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, but as I'm loading this up, one of the things that I use is Dehancer Pro. So Dehancer Pro, the reason why I use it within that space of of you know color grading my project compared to something like um uh compared to something like you know film nitrate which is what i used in the beginning and then even with davinci resolve they have um the film color pro or i'm sorry they have film look creator the thing about dehancer that i really like is film nitrate kind of transforms a little bit of the footage to film and then film look creator it, it does a pretty cool job but it, essentially it adds grain to your project D dehancer pro if you look at this shot right here let me close this and, right look at how milky and clean this is but it still gives you the aesthetic of film right it dirties up the thing dehancer really gives you a lot of minute 
options. It really kind of digs in there and it lets you control exactly what you want to control while taking your digital image, especially something from like the black magic sensor and really transforming it and emulating film as much as possible. I mean, Behance Pro is as close that I've ever gotten uh, to really, really getting that film look to where nobody, unless the person used film, shot with film, processed film, only that person that's really into it will ever know like, hey, that's a little different than Fuji film or Kodak film. The majority of us are gonna be like, oh, that looks like film. We're not gonna know the difference, but this does the best job in my opinion with you as the filmmaker, as the color, as the editor, to get that look that you want. So just a quick little um, thing. This is before, right? This is what it looks like out of camera, and that's what it looks like after I color grade it and get it to look what I really want it to look like. Um, the, the, the biggest thing with this particular scene is I'll run through this node tree really quick for you guys. Maybe I'll make another video on that that's separate because this is, this is starting to become a long video, but you had your color space transform in, and then you have your color space transform out. This is uh, in the beginning, the end, color space transform out at the end. Then I have my contrast, I have my color settings, I have my uh, dark box. What this really does is if you look on the left side, you see how bright that is, kind of boom. I add that in there to kind of give that, that, uh, that little, it's a, it's a battle between dark and light. Uh, you have your Dehancer Pro here. You have your noise reduction right before the Dehancer. You have your DCTLs that really just very, very slightly push colors. And what I'm really pushing are these reds, right? To where it's super rich without getting too bright. And then I have my skin here. That just pushes the skin tone. Um, but yeah, that's what we currently got. And my name is Jason Park. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'll share more more footage on the project as we progress. You know, we're, we're pretty deep into it right now. Uh, we'll wrap up shooting in the beginning of September. And uh, I look forward to you guys watching this film. Make sure you guys check out Four Amigos on Tubi and Amazon Prime or the better version on YouTube, which is Fast Atlanta, which is my director's cut. Uh, that's free. Uh, Pizza Boy Rick on the CW Amazon Prime and I put it on YouTube as well. And... Um, Always smile, be on the lookout for that. That should release early 2025 because it's been submitted to Sundance and Atlanta Film Festival, but that won't necessarily um, reveal itself whether it got accepted or not until 2025. So the movie won't come out until 2025 either way. And then after that will be Rhino King, which Rhino King, we're going to uh, more than likely self-distribute unless, you know, someone comes along that, that that's really interested in the project. But we're going to, as soon as it's done, we're not gonna submit it to festivals or do anything like that. We're gonna go straight to Film Hub and we're gonna release it to its audience as soon as possible. And then for our next project, we're either going to do another street racing film, which Four Amigos is a street racing film. We're either gonna do a sequel to that or we're gonna do a horror film. So I'm excited about that. Stay tuned. I'm Jason Park and I'll keep you guys updated.